Unit six, AP exam review questions, worked out problems. Apologize for the lack of light, too bad. Integral of a to b is a plus two b, then what's this? Well, let's break it down into integral a to b, f of x dx, plus integral a to b, three dx. This is where you really find out if people know what they're talking about. Because this is a plus two b, this is three x, a to b, a plus two b, plus 3b minus 3a, 2b plus 3b, a minus 3a minus 2a plus 5b. Yeah, look at that, I got it right. I'll close out. Now, this is a Riemann sum. I don't think historically I've ever done this problem. And don't ask me why, but for some reason I look at it this time, and I just say, well, let's assume the function is square root of x. All right, and it's out here to something. I don't know what, it's being, but it's being divided into chunks. And is it a left Riemann sum? Is it a right Riemann sum? I don't know, but the chunk is 1 /20th. This is root x. How do I possibly know this? Well, I'm gonna look at the answers and say zero to one, zero to 20. Let's try zero to one. That's 1 20th to there, 2 20th, 3 20th, that, 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 20 20th to one. So how big is this piece? Well, let's go do a right ring sum. Why? I, I have no idea. So this rectangle, this rectangle, this rectangle. Okay, sure. So, the base is 1 20th times the height is square root of 1 20th plus the next one, 1 20th, square root of 2 20ths. So that's this piece here. Okay, that makes sense. I certainly don't look at this and go, well, obviously. So that is just saying the integral from 0 to 1 square root of x. That's it right there. I, I believe I had a uh, kind of BS answer for the last time I did this. That's not a heck of a lot better, but look at all these answers, square root, square root, square root. It's usually just a simple function that they're saying this is a way to approximate it. At a calculator, I can blast this out and say, well, this is uh, x to the one half, x to add one three halves, two over three times x to the three halves, which is basically one, so it's two thirds. And then I can blast this out and see if I get close to two thirds, uh, which I'm willing to bet I will. Yay, who cares? It's kind of interesting. I'll leave it at that. All the values for which this equals zero. Now I got a graph x squared. It's from two to k, one, two. I know if k equals two, that's going to get it. So maybe it's just this one. Two to two, we're going to get zero because you know that's just a straight line. There's no area to it. But I also know if it goes down here to negative two, going from right to left, that'll be negative. That'll be no. That won't. That won't work. As much as I think it'll work, it won't. If I start at zero, I can go from negative two to two. No, I can't. Yeah, if I start at zero, no, even that wouldn't work. So. I want to just lose two because this is negative area. This is negative area. So done. I never really thought that was going to be one of these answers. I always do the problem. Functions continuous, values given as a table long. Use these what's a trapezoidal approximation. So, as I've mentioned a few times before, I'm a fan. These are not equal intervals. So all that cool technique we have is gone. 
three, it's first gap, times 10 plus 30, that's one half, two, that's the second gap, 30 plus 40, plus one half, one, 40 plus 20. 40, 20 times three, 60, 70, two's cancel. 60 over 230 should get me 160. And it does. Let this be the antiderivative sine to cube x, which is nice because the real way to do it is like a nightmare. If f of one equals zero, then f of eight equals. So let's create a model. Integral of one equals zero, one q x sine the third x. Yeah, unsure if it's capital or lowercase. Antiderivative of this, plug in one equals zero, thumbs up. Therefore, integral one to eight, sine of sine cubed x, oh boy, equals calculator. One, two, eight. Careful here, parentheses, sine of x. The third, x, 0 0.632. Now this is a great AP problem. You have to be smart enough to set it up. And then remember, you get to use your calculator. Let f of x equal all this nonsense. At what value is this a minimum? Well, we take the derivative. How am I going to possibly take the derivative of that? That's why we get paid the big bucks in this class. So, chain rule 2x minus 3, e to the x squared minus 3x squared. That's the derivative set equal to zero, e is never gonna be zero, ever. So, two x minus three equals zero, two x equals three, x equals three halves. Always positive, let's plug in zero just to see, e to zero is one. Plug in a billion, e to some billion is a very positive number. Plug in zero, remember we plug it into the derivative, what value is f of x minimum? So I don't need f of x, just the value. Plug in zero, I get negative. Plug in two, I get positive. So three halves. Slick. Let f be a function such that, such that the second derivative is 6x plus 12. Find f of x if the graph of f is tangent to the line at the point. Yeah, what, what a freaking nightmare. Okay, fine, 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 fine. Um, f prime of x equals 6x squared over 2, 3x squared plus 12x plus some c. Okay, and f of x is the graph of f is tangent to the line. Of course, minus y. I need slope here. Yeah, I got to find the slope here. So, um, fly over the fly over, over y equals four x minus five. At the point zero five, I plug in zero, I get out negative five. Nice. So m equals four. Uh, do I need that? If f is tangent, uh, so the uh, at that point. When x equals zero, x still equals zero, the slope is four. That's confusing stuff. Why did I do that? That's weird. Three times zero squared plus 12 times zero plus c equals four, c equals four. F prime of x equals three x squared plus 12x 
plus four. F of X equals X to the third plus six X squared plus four X plus C. When X equals zero, C equals five, zero, zero, zero. Plug in zero, oops, negative five. So there's my function, f of x, x to the third plus six x squared plus four x minus five. Would you see that on a real AP exam? Yeah, that's a little long. They would probably leave one term out, but it's called six x or something. But no, no, it's not unusual, not a, not a unfair problem by the stretch of the imagination. Find the average value of f of x on the closed intervals negative one to one. All right, that equals one over one minus negative one times the integral negative one to one of this monster equation, x to the third plus six x squared plus four x minus five. This you would not see on an actual exam because it's too much. One half x to the fourth over four plus six to the third over three, two x to the third, x squared over two, two x squared minus five x. They were a little bit nice with the negative one to one, but not much. One half, one fourth plus two plus two minus five. Minus one fourth squares away, minus two plus two plus five. I can get rid of u, u, damn it, I just screwed up. One fourth minus one fourth, two minus negative two. Um, I gotta keep that one. Minus two, two minus two. Uh, negative five, minus five, keep that. Something feels very wrong here, plus five. I guess that's it. Equals one half, negative three, minus three, negative six. Negative three. Again, too long a problem for a real AP, but yeah, I would see definite aspects of that. Let f be a differentiable function with the following properties. Find f of x. Yeah. Oh, this looks hard. All right. f prime of one equals negative six. In other words, a times one squared plus b times one equals negative six. Okay, uh, let's get a second derivative here. F double prime of one equals two uh, a one plus b, that equals six. So let's put these on top of each other. A plus b equals negative six. And 2a plus b equals 6. Let's make all this negative. I would never do it that way. I'd go through and change them all. 2a minus a is a. b minus b is 0. 6 minus negative 6 is 12. a equals 12. And I've got right here 12 plus b equals negative 6. Subtract 12. We know that b equals negative 18. So far, so good. OK. So f prime of x equals 12x squared plus negative 18x. f of x equals integral of this, x third of 3, 4x to the third minus 9x squared plus c. Hmm. 
the integral of f of x is 14 from 1 to 2. Are they really going to make me work this hard? Oh boy, they are. That's a pain. Okay, integral of f of x dx is 1 to 2 is to the fourth x to the fourth minus the third 3x to the third plus cx 1 to 2. We know that equals 14. Hopefully this gets us there. Equals 2 to the fourth 16 minus 24 plus 2c minus realize I'm probably running out of space. Minus one minus three plus C, uh, negative eight plus two, negative six. Plus C, which equals 14. C equals 20. Wow. F of X equals 4X to the third plus negative 9X squared plus 20. Woo. Working for a living. What F of X? Equal the integral from zero to x times t squared. The trapezoid rule. Yeah, okay, whatever. Draw a little graph. I happen to know that if I plug in, oh no, I don't. Hi, which is three point one four. I get here, so three will get me a little short of that. Yeah, no, I'm not so sure about that anymore square root of pi, which is 1.8 or something. We're actually going to get below the line a little bit here. Out here at three. Who knows? We'll do the best we can. Uh, four equal subdivisions. Well, that stinks. The video would set up this problem. 0 0.75, 2.25. And off we go. That's going to be weird, but doesn't matter. So area of the trapezoid is the division is 0 0.75 over 2. First one plug in 0, we get 0 plus sine of 0 0.75 squared 2 plus sine of 1.5 squared plus sine of 2.25 squared plus sine nine. Oh, for goodness sakes, I didn't read the full question. Naughty, 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 from zero to two. So this becomes one, becomes 1.5, becomes 2, becomes 0 0.5. Cross this out. Here, trapezoid, 0 0.5 over 2. 0 plus 2 times sine of 1 fourth plus sine of 1 plus sine of 9 fourths. I don't know why I have these extra parentheses here, plus sine of two equals 0.744. I do not trust my brain. I go two times two times. Yeah, I guess that's right. Um, mode. Good. Sine 0.25 plus sine 1 
plus sine and divided by four. Close parentheses. Mm, I gotta go back for parentheses. I just realized what I did wrong. Plus times second. Insert parentheses. Two times all of that. Plus sine of two. I got 1.388, and my other answer is very different. Well, let's try and put it in properly this time. Point 0.5 over 2 times parentheses 0 plus, I forgot the 2. No, I didn't. 2 times parentheses sine of 0.25 plus sine of one, plus sine and divided by four, plus sine of two. I should do it. Now I got an even different number of 1.161. I'm gonna pause things, see if I can sort this out. I think I figured it out, I forgot. Squared. Zero point seven four four. Yeah, see that's why I don't trust myself. Oof! On what intervals is f increasing? So the derivative of this is just an x there. Everybody's going to freak about the t squared and think chain rule. No, it's what's on the limits is just sine t squared. So uh, f prime of x is sine t squared. So we set it equal to zero. That means when t squared is pi and two pi, why don't I use zero? That's odd. When t equals zero, I gotta think about this one for a minute. Well, I guess I know that it's at zero comma pi and two pi. You might say like, no, 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 we're looking from zero to two on what intervals uh, for zero to three. We're actually looking zero to three. That's a different question We're back up here. So why would I do 6.2 pi and eight? Because I'm about six square root of everything. So T equals zero comma root pi comma root two pi. Well, square root of six, between two and three, so it's definitely on the limit. This is uh, the root of pi one point seven seven two and two point five zero seven. All right, they're both between zero and three, so put them on number one. Uh, we do not need to put them on number one. If we go up here, we look, 1.772 is clearly that one right there. All right, and it's all positive, so it's gonna go, well, let's put them on number one. Uh, it only goes down to zero here, but we don't have to check left of it. Root pi, root two pi, and then we go up to uh, three. Sure, whatever. Um, root pi plug in one. Sine of one is of one squared. Positive. Increasing. All right, uh, so let's try two. T is two, so sine of four is negative. And then this is uh, 2.5, so sine of nine. So we're gonna plug in three is positive again. So F increases on the zero to root pi. My answer actually has the brackets and 
root i to three. So that's the only interval we're allowed to check. Ooh, two five, two five. Complex. If the average random closed interval is k, find the interval of one in terms of k. Well, that just means average rate of change. Ooh, careful. I was thinking of average value. <whistles> Dangerous. No, oh, looks like I might have done this wrong. Average random change and closed interval find in terms of k. Mm, this is complicated. I got to think about this a lot. Uh, my answer key is wrong. The average value is K. Well, I'm off to the races. But the average rate of change. I got to pause this and think. So I've looked at this and thought about it. It doesn't make any sense. So I must have mistyped the average value of that is k, you know, so it's one over three minus zero in a row, zero to three sine of t squared dt equals k and the integral zero to three sine of t squared dt equals three k. Uh, just testing if you remember how to do that. I'm gonna have to change my, uh, my notes. Couple pages to go. Rate at which water flows out of pipe. Boy, have I seen this one a lot. I am not drawing a graph only because I am running a little short on time and that this is going very long. Are the gaps consistent? They are, therefore, over two. 9.6 plus two times, off we go. 10.3 plus 10.9 plus 11.1, plus 10.9, plus 10.5, plus 9.6, equals 53.2. I'm putting two zeros on here because it makes me so nervous. Gallons, because they give us a rate and the integrate, so we go to gallons. Hours, gallons per hour, no unit problems. So what is that? This is the total number of gallons of water that flows out of the pipe. in 24 hours. So all these rates get slapped together. In space above, use the, oh, look at that, I just did that. Use the trapezoidal rule with six equal subdivisions. Wait, look at that, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. That was nerve wracking, so I did answer A. And then is there some time that it equals zero? Uh, so we would go with uh, yes. Slope between zero and 24. Is 9.6 minus 9.6 over 24 minus zero, which is zero. The mean value theorem. says there is some point because it's differentiable. On this differentiable function,
between zero and 24 that has the same slope. of zero. Ooh, that actually hurts. Suppose rate of water is approximated by this weird thing used to approximate the average water flow. It gives you a measure. Um, oh, it doesn't say. Interesting. But we'll have to assume it's the same one. So average flow, one over 24 minus zero integral, zero to 24. Let's be lazy, shall we? Q of T, dt. Rate of water flow, or the average rate of water flow during the 24 hour period. So we'll get how much water divided by 24 and bang, we're done. I can do all this by hand or I could just blast it all out on a calculator. So, Zero to 24. Point oh one times 50 plus 25x. What is x squared? Dx. So all it takes gives us exactly 10.58. Throw a zero around there just to make ourselves feel better. Gallons per hour. If you wanted to do that by hand, it's 950x plus 25x squared over two minus x third over three, plug it all in. Hey, that's why we have a calculator. Graph the function consisting of three lines that was shown above. G of x is the integral starting at one. Compute g of four. We gotta go up here to g of four equals starting at one. Now we're not given any value here. Now you still just confuse the heck out of me. So be aware that's not a problem. If I plug in one, I get out zero. So that means this is zero. If there was a plus something here, that would kind of set it up. So we're fine. So one, I've got a triangle and a trapezoid. So it's one half, three, and one times one plus one half, one times one. G of four is two. G of negative two, we're gonna put negatives in top of everything. It's one just big gigundius triangle. Negative one half, three times three. Yeah, no, I'm not, I put a bunch of calculus speak in my previous answer key. No, just gonna keep it simple. Negative nine, pass. Find the instantaneous rate of change with G with respect to X at X equals two. Hmm, so derivative at X equals two. That's odd, okay. ddx, t of x, x equals two, meaning do the algebra and then plug that in later. ddx is just f of x and x equals two, which is just f of two. This is this, so two is, plug in two, get out one. Plug in two, get out one. And find the absolute minimum value of G on the closed interval, negative two, four. Well, if we're starting at one, positive, negative, they want the minimum value of G, right? Yeah, so we've already done it. So that's gonna be G of negative two equals negative nine halves. Area 
is a negative above the x axis when going left of x equals two because, darn it, x equals one. Because g of x equals an integral from one to x f of t dt. Second derivative is not defined at one and two, which of values are points of inflection with the graph of g just by your answer. Point of inflection occurs where g prime equals f changes direction. So the derivative is the derivative of g of x is a function of f. So we want where this happens. Now I gotta think about this. All right, so we want it where the second derivative of this. So let's walk through this real quick. G prime of X equals F of X. G double prime of X equals F prime of X. When does F prime of X change positive negative or negative to positive? So when's the slope go from positive to negative? POI at X equals one. That's it. Whew. I'm tired. Hope you're tired. Happy mathing. Good luck.